I decided to play every JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game. Here's my thoughts. Also, just a warning for anyone watching, there may be some spoilers for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in this video. I tried to avoid spoiling anything too crazy, but just be warned. Here we go! JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the Super Famicom, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in the West, was released exclusively in Japan back in 1993. This game has no subtitle and is based on part 3 of the manga. For the record, this game normally is entirely in Japanese, but I'm using an English patch. It's a point-and-click style adventure game mixed with a turn-based battle system. The art style is pretty cool for a game of this era though. There's a very limited field of view, but the way it's stylized is pretty impressive, and it either was an artistic decision or a technical one. The game only lets you move left and right, but for the kind of game this is, it definitely works. A cool benefit of this is that the facial expressions of your party members can change dynamically on the screen during events. Like I already said, the game lets you move left and right through various maps, but unfortunately you can't examine anything that isn't directly relevant to the plot, so there's no blur about anything that's not important. At the beginning of battles, you choose a tarot card that has various buffs and effects that can affect any of your party members. The battles are pretty straightforward, you can just attack enemies, but you can also hurt them with words, which is actually pretty great. The battles can be drawn out if you and the enemy dodge attacks multiple times in a row, and sometimes you have to use the check command to progress battles, otherwise it's an endless dodge fest. There's no way to know to use the check command unless you realize that everyone keeps dodging over and over. The fights aren't super engaging, but the the novelty of controlling these characters in a turn-based game kept me interested. It also felt super easy to get lost walking around in the game world, but that could just be my bad directional skills. There is standard RPG fare in that you can go to shops to buy items to increase your stats, but they did this thing that early RPGs did where each item was specific to each character, which is kind of annoying and I feel like artificially inflates the difficulty. Honestly, my overall impression of this game is that they did a great job honoring the source material and also coming up with a cool adaptation of the art style that worked within the technical limits of the Super Famicom. That being said, the battle system isn't very involved and it leaves a lot to be desired. I would go back and finish this game if not for the battle system. Style-wise though, this game is top-notch. This game has a super cool opening. The graphics for this game have also aged really well. Sure, it's not in HD or anything, but it still looks really good. The cutscenes do the job, and they also look really good. The artwork looks like it's right out of the manga, which is actually pretty awesome too. The animations are really good and really smooth. Even the character select is stylized like it's a manga volume. Gameplay-wise, the controls feel incredibly responsive, and this is coming from someone who is not big on fighting games. In combat, you can fight alone or with your stand out. If your stand is out, you have increased attack and defense. If the stand takes damage, the stand gauge depletes and eventually the stand will go away. It's actually an interesting dynamic because you're easier to hit when your stand is out and some characters can even have their stand pushed forward leaving them more susceptible to attacks. It's a risk versus reward kind of gameplay system and it's fairly in-depth especially for a fighting game. There's a few special moves you can do depending on the button combinations and the fights in this game are also really varied. They're not just one note drawn out battles. When I got into a fight with Devo and Ebony Devil, Ebony Devil seemed to be trying to get in between me and Devo. Then when I got past him and was able to actually get get direct hits on Devo, they started doing this pincer attack on me. I don't know if this fight was intentionally designed this way, but it sure felt like it. This isn't even the only fight where that happened either. But as far as fight variety goes, there's another fight which really isn't even technically a fight. It's a stage where you're up against Endul, Endul? Endul. I'm gonna say Endul. It's a stage where you're up against Endul, and the entire idea is that he's sending his stand at you over a large area, and it feels almost like you're playing a platformer. Alessi has an entire game mechanic where his stand can turn you into a child. It was actually pretty fun, and a lot of the fights in this game have cool little variables and changes like that. Though, one complaint I do have, the vanilla ice fight is broken. Like, absolutely broken. He can't attack much when he's not in his stand, but once he gets into it, he can fly around and deal free damage to me. There's probably some some way to dodge it, but I tried for a long time and I could not figure it out. It's an incredibly unfair and hard fight, and it's the only reason I didn't finish Jotaro's route. But overall, this game clearly has a lot of depth, and I think I've just scratched the surface. If I was to come back to it, it would probably just be to play through the stories of each character rather than to try to, I don't know, get good at it. 
This is a port of not only the original arcade version of the game, but an expanded version called Heritage for the Future. Both versions you can actually play and they're available at the title screen. JoJo's Venture is just the arcade version with no changes that I could identify. The new version is like the arcade version, but expanded with a few new characters and modes. Arcade mode has two variations. One is called Challenge and the other is called Story. In Challenge mode, there's no cutscenes, just fight after fight after fight. After each fight, you have the choice of either replenishing your health or increasing your special move gauge. Story mode is basically the same as the arcade version. Finishing challenge mode as various characters is how you unlock special characters, like a young version of Joseph Joestar, which in my opinion is actually super cool. Of course, since this is a home release, there's a training mode and some options like difficulty, sound, etc. There's also a straightforward versus mode meant for just two players duking it out. Finally, there's a mode you can unlock called Alessi mode. What Alessi mode does is turns everyone in versus mode into a child. It's really cool and kind of fun looking at all the child movesets of the characters. For giggles, I decided to see what happens when you use this on young Joseph, and it just turns him into what I assume is a student? Whatever this reference is, I don't understand it, but it is pretty cool. Overall, this game is definitely an improvement on the arcade version, and if I did come back to play the stories for each character, this is definitely the version I'd come back to. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind is a PlayStation 2 game that never got a release outside of Japan. I'm actually emulating this and using an English patch, but normally everything would be in Japanese. It's an adaptation of part 5 of the manga. My initial impressions? This game looks really good. The art style has aged really well for a PS2 game. It actually really does justice to the original creator's art style. It's a story-based beat-em-up that's broken down into individual arenas where you fight enemy as Giorno and his Stan Golden experience, and also his gang with their respective stands. What's cool is that the fights aren't always just straight up punching and using special abilities though. For example, one of the early fights, just like in the story, is against the stand Black Sabbath. His ability allows him to travel through shadows, meaning you can't just run up on him because he'll always have the advantage. Instead of taking him on in a direct fight, you have to make him use the shadows of birds above you to bring him to the shadows of these smaller pillars that you can smash, which then leaves him vulnerable. This kind of fight variety is really excellent, and this game is just a lot of fun because of it. The story seems to more or less follow part 5 to a T, which is fine because the story is excellent and the gameplay is fun. Obviously some stuff is glossed over, but a page for page retelling probably wouldn't be conducive to making a fun game anyways. As you engage in each fight, there are secret actions you can do called secret factors. They work kind of like an achievement system. They can range from using a certain attack at a certain time or just engaging the fight in a certain way. For example, I got one for unsuccessfully attempting to summon my stand in Eluso's Mirror World. At the end of the missions, you get a point tally, and unlocking these secret actions gives you bonus points. When you complete missions, you unlock stuff relating to that mission in a gallery that can be accessed from the main menu. This gallery is pretty cool. It has concept art for the maps, which look really similar to the final product. But what's super cool is you can actually revisit the stages you've already completed without any enemies just to explore them. There's not a whole lot to it, but it really lets you appreciate some of the details you'd otherwise miss, and I really wish more games did this kind of thing. Then there's story dramas in the gallery, which are fully voiced scenes with full color manga panels that cover parts of the story that the main game doesn't. These are awesome and I spent a lot of time just watching them for fun, completely forgetting that I was recording footage for this video. The presentation of this game is great. It's actually a huge shame that this never came to the West because it's actually an excellent game. And if you can get your hands on a copy, it is well worth it. I had a lot of fun playing this and absolutely plan to finish it at some point. This game had so much potential. Now listen, it's not a bad game, but let me explain. For starters, this one only came out in Japan also, and I'm using an English patch again to play it. I also want to note that this game, for some unknown reason, really liked eating up all of my PC's resources in the emulator. If the footage is choppy, I'm really sorry. The game ran smoothly, it just didn't record smoothly. Anyways, moving on. This game is a single-player brawler, and it seems to cover the entirety of Part 1 Phantom Blood. It's entertaining to watch the long cutscenes, but the gameplay itself leaves something to be desired, and that's an understatement. The cutscenes are fully voiced and pretty dynamic and involved as far as storytelling goes. I really like them, and I think they're the best thing about this game, and a reason I'd imagine super fans or just JoJo fans in general would want to play it. Well, aside from the short, fully animated cutscenes, those are not very good and are just laughable at best. But we've got to talk about the gameplay. This game is an arena brawler similar to Golden Wind, but this one is way less polished. The one-on-one -on -one fights are essentially battles of attrition where you block for 20 seconds waiting for the enemy to leave an opening. 
The issue is, the enemy just doesn't really attack much. They just stand there. If you try to hit them while they're just standing there, they'll perfect dodge the attack and deal damage to you 90% of the time. There are times where the enemy will attack and you can follow up their attack with an attack of your own, but there's no consistency to it because sometimes they can perfect dodge anyways. The only viable way to win matches is just to stand there and guard for excessively long periods of time. What's worse though is that the fights have a time limit, so the best strategy for fighting enemies isn't even really viable. The only way to win fights is to just take enough chances and get hit without running out of time. Of course, the only way you can do that is if the camera will cooperate long enough to allow you to see anything that's happening. It's just not a fun experience, especially coming right off of Golden Wind, which came out years prior and is just so much more fun and has way more imaginative fights. This could have been a good game. I don't know what the reasoning behind the decisions were to make this game play the way it does, but it was a clear miss. I don't want to be too rough because buried deep in there, there are probably some good mechanics, but I just couldn't put myself through more of this game without losing my sanity. The intro of this game gives me the same vibes as the intro of the anime, and I love it a lot. The title screen of this game has a different character say the name of the game every time. And I really like when games do that. Let me start by saying the menus in this game have various characters talking to you, and I really like this as an aesthetic choice, but I'm sure some people would probably get annoyed by it pretty quickly. I think it's charming overall though. All-Star Battle is another one versus one fighting game, but this one is a lot more accessible than the arcade game in my opinion. The game allows you to chain combos just by mashing, so people like me who are bad at fighting games can actually get more out than a couple of hits. It looks like you have your main attacks and then also stand attacks with various effects. Summoning a stand seems to work kind of like how it did in the arcade and Dreamcast game, but just visually. I don't know if there's actually a gameplay difference. The game has a pretty good variety of single player modes. The first is story mode. In this, you can choose which part you want to progress through. Each part, in general, follows the story of the manga. The one exception is part 8, which I assume is due to there not being much story available at the time this game was being made. Once you complete the missions, you can go back and redo any of them in any order. The missions sometimes have special modifiers too, like boosting an enemy's attack. There's also secret missions that give you more money if you complete them within the mission you're doing, kind of like the secret factors from Golden Wind. Before you begin the mission, you can spend some of your gold on a support item that gives you various buffs or gives the enemy a debuff. Campaign mode is kinda weird. It's a mode where you're put on an online leaderboard and fight CPU versions of other players. It uses an energy system that depletes when you find new fights, and it feels like they were testing some kind of strange free-to-play mechanics in this full price title. Doing these battles unlocks cosmetic stuff, but it feels like these things were arbitrarily locked behind this mode. It's an okay mode, I guess, but I really don't see myself coming back to it. Oh, I forgot to mention, some stages have a gimmick, which is just where something can happen on the stage that can damage you and the enemy if you're caught up in it. You can usually see where the gimmick will happen on the ground of the stage, and if you avoid it the whole fight, sometimes it just doesn't happen at all. Also, so sometimes if you defeat an enemy in a certain way, you get something called a dramatic finish. This is just a flashier finish with some cool references. They're a bit tricky to figure out, but fun to see once you do get them. For the remaining modes, there's arcade mode and versus mode. These are pretty straightforward. In arcade, the difficulty options are normal, hard, and very hard, and you can choose whether or not the stage gimmicks happen. You complete 8 fights and get a rank at the end. It's about what you'd expect, but I'm glad the mode is here. In the versus mode, you can choose to play offline or online against people. Offline, you can either play against another person or a CPU. Or, I guess, also a CPU versus a CPU if that's something you want to do. The cast in this game is huge, and that's before the DLC. There's characters from all eight parts of the series, and every part is well represented. The only one that doesn't have a variety of characters available is Part 8, and that's probably because Part 8 was still relatively new when this game came out. I do have to point out that there are quite a few characters that are locked behind a $2 DLC purchase for each character, but the cast is already pretty big without them, so I can't complain too much. There's a gallery mode which lets you look at 3D models, artwork, music, and sound effects. You can use the money you earn from doing missions to buy these, and honestly, they're pretty cool. There's reference artwork that looks like it was made by the author himself, and it's cool to compare it with the eventual 3D model. Again, like the Golden Wind game on PS2, I feel like a lot more games could use modes like this. One last thing I do want to note is that this game has some really cool character interactions. Like pitting a young Joseph versus an old Joseph gives you a special interaction. Or having Jonathan Joestar face Part 3's Dio. Or, heck, 
part 1 Dio versus part 3 Dio. Some of these are pretty deep cuts, and it says a lot about the development team, who clearly had a passion for the lore of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. These interactions are just icing on the cake though, and I think this game is something special. All-Star Battle is what I'd consider the complete package if you're a JoJo fan. It's got a pretty great story mode, a huge selection of characters, and some fun gameplay that's accessible to beginners but clearly has some depth. I think the only issue is that this game may be harder and harder to find as time goes on, so hopefully someday they bring it over to newer consoles, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. You can tell right away that this game took a lot of cues from All-Star Battle. This game is a 2 vs 2 arena fighting game. You have complete control over where your character goes, and you have a lot more freedom of movement in general since there's jumping. The moves in general have a lot more movement involved since there's so much wide open space in the arenas, and it can lead to a lot of chaos. So much chaos, in fact, that sometimes it's actually kind of hard to tell what's going on. Since it's 2 versus 2, there's a lot of fun combo attacks and even some flashy moves called dual heat attacks, where the characters you're using work together to do a cool move that does tons of damage. Something I really like is that almost everyone has special dialogue for interacting with their partner in this game. It's a lot of fun and has some cool throwbacks. The story mode in this game features a completely original story that encompasses characters from the entire series. It's one big crossover with an overarching original story, which is actually pretty cool. One big downside though is that you're bound to run into spoilers for every part if you're not totally caught up in the manga or anime of those parts. The cutscenes in this game, though, are probably the best in any JoJo game, hands down. They're fully rendered and voiced, and they did not phone them in at all. Almost all of them are full 3D motion and very enjoyable to watch. Plus, it's really refreshing to see kind of a new story and not something just retreaded. Even if a lot of it follows the story beats of the original parts, and absolutely spoils every part's ending. As for gameplay, the story is broken up in such a way that you watch cutscenes then engage in mostly 2 vs 2 battles. You have the freedom to swap the characters in and out of your party, and characters in your party can gain experience. Leveling up allows you to increase your stats and unlock new abilities in the game's skill tree. The game also brings back a system similar to the secret factors called Jojolities. To get these, you have to do certain actions and battles that give you extra points at the end. There are parts in the story where you can free roam, which the game calls exploration stages, but these are pretty bare bones. You can talk to NPCs and interact with some stuff on the maps, but I really don't have a whole lot to say about the free roaming since it's just a means to an end in the campaign. Free battle is what you'd expect. 2v2 player versus CPU. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to do local multiplayer. That is something that's a no-brainer, and I'm not sure why they decided not to include it. Keeping with recent tradition, there is a gallery mode in this game, and it's really similar to All-Star Battles. There's also a shop where you can buy all kinds of stuff, including alternate colors and costumes using the game's currency. On that front, it is a bit better than All-Star Battles. This game, aesthetically, is very similar to All-Star Battle. That being said, I can't really say this game is better or worse than All-Star Battle because they play completely differently. This game has way more fan service though, so I'd probably recommend it more than All-Star Battle if you're a big JoJo's Bizarre Adventure fan and you're looking for something that's kind of new material and fresh. Plus, the story is more than just a retread, and if you're someone who's already consumed all the official JoJo's Bizarre Adventure media, this is something new that was apparently written by the author Araki himself. So we've gone through every single home console release of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There are a couple of games that I could not play, but let me explain. The first would be the arcade game JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Last Survivor. This game I could not play because there's just nowhere for me to play it. It's an arcade-only battle royale game where you can control various characters from the franchise, and that's really all I can say about it. If there was a way for me to play it, I would, but right now it seems like the only option would be to go to Japan and find an arcade cabinet. Another thing I've got to talk about are the mobile games. There were three of them, and all of them are no longer available. In fact, I'm recording this in September of 2021, and the most recent game, JoJo's Pitter Patter Pop, is no longer available as of the first of this month. I missed it that narrowly. I tried to install all three of them on my Android phone, but unfortunately they're tied to a server that no longer exists and they're all unplayable offline. I can't stand when game companies do this, and I really think this kind of thing sucks for game preservation. But that being said, this is the end of the video. I hope you liked this overview because I really enjoyed making it, and I would love to make more. Please let me know if there's any game series you'd like me to play in the future, and I might do it in a future video if there's demand for it. 
Also, my channel is pretty small, so I'd appreciate a subscription if you like this kind of stuff, and if you can like the video or whatever metrics YouTube wants now. I'm releasing it to basically no audience, so if you are watching, just know that I really appreciate you and it means the world to me. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye now!